today we will study some applications of recurrence relations. In particular what we will see today is that many counting problems can be solved by using recurrence relations relatively easily. The basic strategy of handling these problems is that given a problem we will try to build up a recurrence relation uh, on certain numbers and then we will solve that recurrence relation. So, our topic today is applications of recurrence relations. Let us look at the first example. Using only three letters A, B, C, how many words of length n can be formed so that two consecutive A's do not appear in those words. Now, uh, here we have a counting problem. Now, if somebody asked me that uh, given three letters, how many words can be formed uh, of uh, which are of length n, then I would have considered n positions like this total number n and then I know that each position can be occupied by three ways since we have three symbols a b c and therefore, here we have three, here we have three, here we have three and the last also three. So, the total number is three into three into and so on up to three again n times which is equal to 3 to the power n, but here we have a, a slightly different condition because here the problem says that I cannot consider the words which have consecutive a's. Now, let us consider uh, if n equal to 0, if n equal to 0 then that means in the words there is no letter. So, the total number of such words is let us call it a 1 which is equal to 1. Now, when n equal to 1 and 
I have got three letters, then that Uh, sorry, here I will write A 0, this is A 0 of course, because this is this corresponds to n equal to 0. Now, we have n equal to 1 for which we have A 1 and A 1 is equal to 3. The reason is that there are three letters and I can write a word A another word b and the third word c. So, these are three distinct words. So, a 1 equal to 3. Now, if we consider a 2, for n equal to 2, then let us count how many ways we can write a 2 the number of ways we can build up two letter words out of the three symbols uh, is let us start counting we can write a a a b a c and then we can write b a b b b c and lastly C A, C B, C C. So, there are all together 3 into 3, 9 words. Now, what we see here is that there is one word which contains two consecutive A's. So, we have to cancel this. Therefore, now we have 8 words and a 2 equal to 8. Now, like that of like, like this we can go on, but we would like to have a compact uh, uh, relation in the form of a recurrence relation. Therefore, what we do is that we say that suppose a n is the total number of such words. So, a n equal to the total number of such words. So, I have some n positions where letters have been put in. Now, we ask a question, what about the last position? The last position can be occupied by A, B or C. Now, then we ask that suppose the last position is occupied by A, then what will happen? If the last position is occupied by A, then of course, in the position previous to that, A cannot appear again. So, either it will be B or it will be occupied by C. So, now let us count the positions. This is the position number 1, this is position number 2 and so on, this is position number n minus 2, this is position number n minus 1 and this is position number n. Similarly, here this is position number 1, this is position number 2 and we move up in this way and then ultimately we arrive at position number a n minus 2, position number a n minus 1 and lastly position number a n. 
therefore, we see that if we have a word in the set of all words which are ending with a and not having two consecutive a, then uh, ending with a means the nth position has a, then the n minus 1th position of those words will not have a, will have either b or c. So, we have these two configurations and if we look at the segment from n to n minus 2 in both these words, then we will see that this segment can be occupied by any word of length n minus 2 consisting of the three symbols a, b, c and not having two consecutive a's. Now, according to our notation, a n minus 2 is equal to the total number of words of length n such that no consecutive A's appear. So, we will at least have A n minus 2 plus A n minus 2 many words in the set of words of length n having no consecutive a's. Now, let, let us move to the next page here. So, what we have seen is that when we are considering length n segment ending with a when we are considering length n segment ending with a then the previous position can be either b or c and there there are n minus 2 many positions and those positions for each case b and c, b or c can be occupied by a n minus 2 many words of length n minus 2. Therefore, I have got a n minus 2 plus a n minus 2. Now, we look at the other situation when the word of length n is not ending with a, then it may end with either b or C. In either of these cases, the initial segment consisting of n minus 1 letters can be occupied by a n minus 1 and a i n minus 1 words. So, total number of words that we have is a n minus 1 plus a n minus 1. Therefore, we come to the conclusion 
that if we have words of length n ending with a, then there will be a n minus 2 plus a n minus 2 many words of length n ending with a and not having two consecutive a's anywhere. And if the nth n length word is ending with b or c, then we will have n plus 1 plus a n plus 1 many words and these are the only possible words of length n consisting of three symbols a, b, c, so that no two consecutive a's appear. Therefore, we can write a recurrence relation in this form a n equal to a n minus 2 plus a n minus 2 plus a n minus 1 plus a n minus 1. In other words, we have the recurrence relation a n minus 2 times a n minus 1 minus 2 times a n minus 2 which is equal to 0. Once we have done this, we need to solve this recurrence relation. We note that it is a second order recurrence relation with constant coefficients and of course, it is a linear recurrence relation. We consider the solution a n equal to c r raised to the power n and substitute it in the recurrence relation which we denote by 1 to obtain c r to the power n minus 2 c r to the power n minus 1 minus 2 c r to the power n minus 2 which is equal to 0. That is uh, taking uh, the common factor c and r to the power n minus c into r to the power n minus 2 uh, out from all the terms we will get r square minus 2 times r minus 2 equal to 0 and solving this we get r equal to Two plus or minus four plus eight, and this gives me two plus or minus square root of twelve by two, which is one plus or minus root of three. Therefore, we get the general solution as a n equal to a constant capital A times 1 plus square root of 3 raised to the power n plus b into 1 minus a square root of 3 raised to the power n. Now, we have to uh, substitute the values of a 0 and a 1 as we have already noted that a 0 is 1. So, let us let us go to the next page and write the uh, general solution of the recurrence relation a n equal to a 1 plus square root of 3 raised to the power n plus b 1 minus square root of 3 whole raised to the power n and uh, for n equal to 0 1 equal to a 0 equal to a plus b. This implies that b 
is equal to 1 minus a. If we put n equal to 1, we know that a 1 is equal to 3, which is equal to a 1 plus square root of 3 plus b 1 minus square root of 3. If we substitute the value of b in this equation, then we will get a 1 plus square root of 3 plus 1 minus a 1 minus square root of 3, which gives us a 1 plus square root of 3 plus 1 minus square root of 3 minus a 1 minus square root of 3 well and proceeding further we have a plus a square root of 3 plus 1 minus square root of 3 minus a plus a square root of 3. Now, there is some there are some cancellations. First of all, a will get cancelled and let me write the equation here, which is 3 equal to 1 minus square root of 3 plus 2 times a square root of 3. That is, 2 times a square root of 3 equal to 2 plus root 3, which gives me a equal to 2 plus root 3 divided by 2 root 3. From this, we see that b equal to 1 minus a, which is equal to 1 minus 2 plus square root of 3, 2 root 3, which is equal to 2 into root 3 in the denominator and in the numerator 2 root 3 minus 2 minus root 3, which is equal to 2 root 3 root 3 minus 2. Therefore, we have the solution to our recurrence relation, which is a n equal to 2 plus square root of 3 divided by 2 square root of 3 this is the value of the first constant capital A and this is multiplied by 1 plus square root of 3 raised to the power n plus square root of 3 minus 2 divided by 2 root 3 into 1 minus square root of 3 raised to the power n. this is our final answer. Let us look at another problem. Now, this problem states that if 
a first case of measles if a first case of measles in a certain school system is recorded and P n denotes the probability that at least one case is reported during the nth week after the first recorded case and the school record provide evidence that p n equal to p n minus 1 minus 1 by 4 p n minus 2, then at which week the probability will decrease below 0 0.01 for the first time. So, what we are looking at here is that suppose a school system uh, uh, checks uh, the reports of a certain disease, let us say measles among children and it starts counting uh, from a week when one recorded event has occurred that is some case of measles have come up. Now, what the school record says that starting from a week where at least one 
measles attack has been recorded, if we start counting the number of weeks, then the probability that in the nth week there will be at least one reported case is given by this recurrence relation. Now, we have got no control over this recurrence relation, uh, it, is, it is from uh, some data source uh, po possibly from, from which the school record is uh, from the records of different years, uh, this has been observed, let us say. And we are asked a question that after how many weeks for the first time this p n is going to go below uh, 0 0.01. For that we have to solve this recurrence relation. In order to do that we first write down the recurrence relation in the form 4 p n minus 4 p n minus 1 plus p n minus 2 which is equal to 0. And now considering that p n is of the form c raised to the power r to the power n, we have the characteristic equation as 4 r square minus 4 r plus 1 equal to 0 and this leads to 2 r minus 1 whole square equal to 0 and therefore, r is half half. So, half is a repeated root of this equation. Now, from the discussions of the previous days, we, we have seen that this means that p n equal to a half raised to the power n plus b n half raised to the power n. And now, we try to look at the initial conditions. If we put n equal to 0, that is in the 0 is weak, uh, then by definition p 0 is 0, because we have not started our observations. Now, if we start from p 1, what we have told in the statement of the problem that we start counting n from the point of observing at least one disease, uh, disease case. Therefore, p 1 is 1. Now, in the equation 1, if we substitute these values, we get 0 equal to a plus b into 0, which is equal to a. So, the constant a reduces to 0 and we have 1 equal to a times half plus b times half. Now, a is 0, therefore, we have only b times half, therefore, we have b is equal to 2. Thus, we have the probability p n is equal to 2 times n into uh, 1 by 2 to the power n. which is essentially n divided by 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, we want this probability to drop below 0 0.01 for the first time. 0 0.01 is 1 by 100. Therefore, we would like this equation to hold that is 100 n less than 2 to the power n minus 1. Now, if we 
check this inequality and keep on varying n from 1 onward like 1, 2 and 3, 4 like that, then we will find that the cutoff is n equal to 12. So, when n equal to 12, then for the first time this inequality will be satisfied. Therefore, p n will become less than 0 .0 point, uh, 0 Now, we will look at a case of application of non-homogeneous recurrence relations. Now, we will again discuss one example. Now, let me write down the example first. for n greater than or equal to 2, suppose that there are n people at a party and that each of these people shakes hands exactly once with all the other people. There. Of course, of course, nobody shakes hands with himself or herself. Now, our question is that what is the number of handshakes? What is the number of handshakes? When we think of this solution, we again start uh, denoting the total number of handshakes when n people are present under the given constraints as a n. So, a n is equal to 
the total number of handshakes under the given constraints under the given set of constraints all right now i would like to build a recurrence relation now let us try to see what happens if we start with let us say two people because we have seen that we do not want n to be to go below 2 because if n is equal to 1 then of course there is no handshakes. So, we start with n equal to 2. So, suppose I have got person number 1 and person number 2 let us call them v 1 and v 2 and I will join them to signify they have shaken hand exactly once. So, we see that a 2 is going to be 1. Now, if we consider that another person is coming, now what will happen? So, let us draw the situation over here, we have got 3 people, so we have now a party of 3 and they are shaking hands with with the given constraints. Now, what we can always do is that we can remove for the time being one person. Suppose, we have left out V 3, then there is only one handshake. So, this is the number of handshakes for two people. So, I have got a too many handshakes. Now, when V th V 3 comes in, then he does not shake hands with himself. Therefore, he has to shake hand with all the other people exactly once. So, therefore, he will shake hand with this person and shake hand with this person. So, the total number of handshakes will be A 2 plus 2 which is denoted by A 3. Now, suppose we know A 3. So, there are 3 people who shakes hands with each other V 1, V 2, V 3. Oh, see they are shaking hand with each other and suppose a fourth person is coming in and let us call him V 4 and so that means now we have a party of 4. So, when V 4 is out the remaining people shakes hands in A 3 many ways and when V 3 V 4 comes in he has to shake hand with all the people except for himself he shakes hand with V 3, he shakes hand with V 2 and lastly or whatever he shakes hand with V 1. So, he has to shake another 3 many hands. So, total number of hand shakes is A 3 plus 3 which is equal to A 4. Now, we can go to the general case that suppose we have got n people. So, we have got V 1, V 2 and so on and lastly we have got let us say uh, V n minus 2, V n minus uh, 3 and over here V n minus 1 and uh, here we have V n. So, we have a party of n people and we know that they shake hand in a n many ways. Now, suppose that 
we have got one more person v n plus 1 and v n plus 1. Uh, so, we have a party of n plus 1 people. Now, uh, suppose they shake hands in, in the designated manner. Now, what we do is that we can choose any of the vertices. Now, let us let us take that we are taking out v n plus 1 and removing all the edges from v n plus 1. Then, we have a party of n and of course, they, will, they are shaking hands exactly once with the others and not shaking hand with, uh, with himself or herself. So, so we have got total of a n minus 1 handshakes and then when v n minus 1 uh, v n plus 1 uh, is considered then he is bound to shake hands with each of the people in the other group. So, the total number of handshakes will be n. So, this is increased by n and which is the total number of handshakes with n plus 1 people. So, we have built up a recurrence relation corresponding to the handshakes. Let us write down this recurrence relation and then let us try to solve it. The homogeneous part of this equation is a n plus 1 minus a n equal to 0 and we take a trial solution. Let us call it a n equal to c r raise to the power n, then we get c r raise to the power n plus 1 minus c r raise to the power n which is equal to 0 and this leads us to r minus 1 equal to 0, because we can of course, assume very reasonably that c not equal to 0 and r not equal to 0. Therefore, we have r equal to 1. Therefore, the homogeneous part written as a n superscript h in bracket is c times 1 to the power n or c which is a constant. Next, we try to find out a particular solution. Here, we choose that trial solution to be a n particular equal to a 1 n square plus a 0 n, which is indeed a rather complicated expression. And if we substitute this in the recurrence relation, then we will get a 1 n plus 1 whole square plus a 0 n plus 1 equal to a n which is a 1 n square plus a 0 n plus n and if we do the usual manipulations then we will get n square a 1 minus a 1 plus 2 times a 1 
plus a 0 minus a 0 minus 1 n plus a 0 plus a 1 equal to 0 and this should hold for all n. Therefore, we have got a 1 equal to a 1 by equating the coefficients to 0 and when I equate the coefficients of n to 0, I get a 1 minus 1 equal to 0 that is a 1 equal to half and uh, when I equate the constant term to 0 that is a 0 plus a 1 equal to 0, then I get a 1 equal to or minus a 1 equal to a 0 which implies a 0 equal to minus half therefore we arrive at the general solution a uh, an equal to constant plus half n square minus half n and now if I put the value of n equal to 2, we know that 2 is equal to uh, sorry 1 here we have got 1 a 2 is 1. So, therefore, 1 equal to a 2 which is equal to c plus half of 4 minus half into 2 which gives me c plus 2 minus 1 which is c plus 1, this implies c equal to 0. Therefore, finally, we have the solution as a n equal to half of n square minus half of n. For n greater than or equal to 2. Thus, we know now that if we have n people in a party and each person shakes hand exactly once with each of the other people present in the party, then the total number of handshakes is half of n square minus half of n. With this handshaking problem, I will end today's lecture. Thank you.